Time now for winners and losers on Wall Street. Rob Black joining us to uh, lend us his insights into some of today's headlines. I want to start talking first off about uh, home flipping. I guess we've reached what a ten-year high. Yeah. Is that what does that signal to you? The fact that there's so many houses being bought and sold and just flipped. What was happening ten years ago? Well, we were on the precipice of a housing bust. Absolutely, and that's what it's telling us. Oh. Real estate, the money's too hot, too good right now, so it draws amateurs out who want to buy a house and sell it within 12 months, getting a big profit. The problem is that's when it starts to become very speculative, and it goes back to 10-year highs, telling us this is about the last time it ha we were that speculative, and it, it went on in three years of down in real estate, and people went bankrupt, and people had homes foreclosed on. So, this is a different housing market than it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, anyone can get a loan. Now it's much tougher to get, so a lot of these deals are done with cash, but when you see the average person, your neighbor, trying to flip a house, be very, very cautious. Um, I like it when the institutional investors do it. Um, they're just m much more prepared to handle a loss. They know what they're doing, yeah. but it, it's just it, it's just a sign. I'm just saying, be careful. And it makes it tough. I mean, if you're in the market to try and buy a house, you're getting outbid by people that have deeper pockets that are just looking to flip these houses. Now, I will ask you quickly. Uh, yep. The last time around, you know, I unfortunately went for a home equity loan okay. right before the. Are you are you cautioning people from doing that? Are we on the verge of seeing it, it values go way down? It depends on what you down? do with the home equity loan. Okay. Uh, Home equity line of credit lets you sell the house without selling. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're taking out an HEL to go out and get a BMW, not a good idea. If you're taking out a home equity line to buy a rental property, great idea. That's what a lot of financial people like myself do. It allows you to sell the home without actually selling it. So it's not a bad thing. Okay. It's just don't go out and buy diamonds and jewelry and, and live the life. Okay. On to uh, cars now. From houses to cars, we have leasing hitting record highs here in this last quarter. Auto sales climbing, and I guess leasing is becoming a bigger and bigger portion of that pie of uh, cars that are leaving the lots. And I report on the economy, and a lot of things look good, uh -huh. but this is one of those signs that things aren't as good as they look. Um, people are leasing. One third of all new cars being leaving the dealership are on leases now, about 29%. Five years ago, that was 20%. In the last couple of years, it's just skyrocketed. Um, it's because of the cheaper payment. So people want the more expensive car, people want the, the lifestyle. Uh, $412 is the average lease that lasts about three years, $412 a month. If you buy that same car, it's about $493. But that loan lasts five years and seven months on average now. So I get why people are doing it. Mm. It's just a bad idea for most people um, because you're going to be selling the car basically in three years back to the dealer um, and giving it back to them. And those are the cars that I buy. Three year cars, mm -hmm. three year old cars with 40,000 miles or less have the best prices on them. That's what I like. Again, I'm not telling you to be like me. Yeah. But People are overpaying for cars right now. They're getting into vehicles they shouldn't just because of f tricky finances, financial engineering, uh, lowering their cost. Not a good idea. That's funny. That was going to be my follow up question to you was, you know, what's the strategy for getting, you know, the best deal on a car? Is there a time of year that's best to buy or lease? But you're saying also factor in the year of the car itself and you can get a great deal yeah. on a car that's fairly new. Cars but lose about 10 15% of their value the moment you drive them off the lot. So yeah. if you can get that three year, two year, you typically get a manufacturer's warranty that it's extended. Those are the best for the bang for your dollar. But again, I'm not going to talk people out buying new cars because they're yeah. going to do it anyway. All right. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Target <laughs> yeah. making headlines today because uh, they say they're going to change things here in the year ahead. They're what really amping up, making this a full shopping experience for people. Yeah. What's interesting to note about this is a couple years ago they were hacked uh -huh. and they brought in a new CEO, and his job is to make everything at Target better um, because sometimes you go in and it's kind of empty, the shelves are all wrong. The food, it's like a giant sized thing of pretzels. We want organic food. We want fresh fruits and vegetables. So he's trying to cater to that. On top of it, he's trying to get Target to be more like Amazon by turning the, the Target stores into shipping centers and getting that out to you faster than Amazon can. He's trying to do a new app that, you know, while you're in the store, your stuff will be put together for you. You can just go and pick it up and it'll, it'll text you and say, hey, your order's ready. He's trying to do a new rewards program that how much money you spend per month gets you, you know, money back. Um, they already have the red card, which we've recently talked about, that gives mm -hmm. you 5% off your purchase. It's tied directly to your uh, bank account, so it's like a debit card. I use it when I go to Target because it's 5% off. Uh, but Target's got a good CEO. Will they compete with Amazon? I don't think so. You don't think so? Even with the network of stores they have that could become distribution centers? Interesting. It's good, but right. Amazon just has that CEO who's a little bit better. They've got that special sauce. All right, finally, you want to end with a uh, viewer question. Yep. This coming to us from Sandra. Sandra writing, what is the best way to save for 
college. I've asked you this question personally myself. A pretty popular thought on minds right now. People are stressed. You have a baby and you want to do the best by your baby and save for college. Um, they're called 529 plans, but you only do the 529 plan after you've maxed out your 401k or your 403b. You got to save for your retirement first because there's a tax deduction. You don't pay federal taxes on that, so it's the better way to save. Um, student loans are going to be there if need be. But there's also a website called You Promise um, where you can put your credit card in. And let's say you're in a church, everyone in the church can go to You Promise and sign up for your baby. And every time they use their card at like a safe way, the money automatically goes to their 529 plan. That's a good idea. Great website for all of this and more, savingforcollege.com. Everyone should check it out if you have a kid and think about college costs. All right, something we can use. Thank you, Rob, yep. very much as always. And if you have a question for Rob, email it to him, rob at robblack.com. Start here at 5 with.